What inspired you to learn Go? I was interested in Go's simplicity and its efficient handling of concurrency. How would you define Go's strengths and weaknesses? Go's strengths include its simplicity, efficient concurrency, and strong community support, while its weaknesses include limited support for generics and sometimes verbose error handling. What are the differences between Go and other programming languages? Go emphasizes simplicity and efficient concurrency, and its syntax is similar to C. Unlike some other languages, it has a garbage collector and a built-in testing framework. What is your experience with concurrency in Go? I have used Go routines and channels to build concurrent programs that can handle multiple tasks at once. Go's built-in concurrency support makes it easy to write efficient and scalable programs. Explain how the garbage collector works in Go. Go's garbage collector automatically frees memory that is no longer needed by the program. It uses a mark and sweep algorithm to find and remove unused memory. What are garoutines and how do they work? Garoutines are lightweight threads in Go that can execute independently and concurrently. They are created using the Go keyword and can communicate with each other using channels. How would you optimize the performance of a Go program? I would use Go's profiling tools to identify performance bottlenecks and optimize them. This might involve using the correct data structures, minimizing memory allocations, and reducing unnecessary locking. Explain what is the use of channels in Go. Channels in Go are used for communication and synchronization between Go routines. They allow safe and efficient sharing of data and coordination of tasks between concurrent processes. What are the differences between a slice and an array in Go? Arrays have a fixed size and cannot be resized at runtime, while slices are dynamic and can be resized as needed. Slices are built on top of arrays and provide a more convenient interface for working with collections of data. Explain the purpose of defer in Go. Defer is used to schedule a function call to be executed after the surrounding function returns. This is often used to ensure that resources are properly released, regardless of how the function exits. What are closures in Go and how are they useful? Closures in Go are functions that can access and use variables that are defined outside of their own function body. They are useful for creating higher-order functions and for managing state in your program. What is the purpose of the sync package in Go? The sync package in Go provides tools for handling synchronization and concurrency in Go programs. It includes primitives such as mutex, RW mutex, and weight group that are commonly used for coordinating access to shared resources. What are the benefits of using Go standard library? The standard library in Go is extensive and provides a wide range of tools for building robust and performant applications. It includes support for networking, cryptography, encoding and decoding data, and much more. By using the standard library, developers can save time and avoid reinventing the wheel. How would you handle errors in Go? In Go, Errors are typically handled using the error interface. Functions that can return errors usually return a tuple of the result and an error value. Developers can then check the error value to see if an error occurred and handle it appropriately. What is the difference between a pointer and a reference in Go? In Go, a pointer is a variable that stores the memory address of another variable, while a reference is an alias for a variable. In Go, all variables are passed by value, so passing a pointer allows you to pass the address of a variable and modify its value, while passing a reference allows you to pass a copy of a variable and modify the original value. Can you explain the concept of interfaces in Go? In Go, interfaces are a way to specify a set of methods that a type must implement to satisfy the interface. 
They allow for decoupling of code and can help simplify complex systems by providing a common interface for different types. What is the difference between a value receiver and a pointer receiver in Go? In Go, a value receiver copies the receiver argument into the function, while a pointer receiver passes a reference to the receiver argument. Value receivers are used when you don't need to modify the receiver value, while pointer receivers are used when you do need to modify the receiver value. What are the best practices for writing efficient and maintainable Go code? Some best practices for writing efficient and maintainable Go code include using Go's built-in concurrency primitives, avoiding global state, writing tests, and following Go's idiomatic style guidelines. It is also important to write code that is easy to read and understand, and to document your code with clear comments. Explain how to implement a simple web server in Go. You can implement a simple web server in Go by using the net slash HTTP package and defining a handler function to respond to incoming HTTP requests. What are the best practices for testing in Go? Some best practices for testing in Go include using the testing package, writing small and focused tests, and using table-driven tests to cover multiple scenarios. What is the difference between the net HTTP and net packages in Go? The net package provides low-level networking primitives, while the net slash HTTP package builds on top of the net package and provides higher-level HTTP server and client implementations. What is the role of context in Go? The context package in Go provides a way to carry request scoped values, cancellation signals, and deadlines across API boundaries and between processes. What are the differences between JSON and XML in Go? JSON is a lightweight and more compact data interchange format compared to XML, and Go provides native support for both formats through the encoding slash JSON and encoding slash XML packages. Explain the purpose of the sync atomic package in Go. The sync slash atomic package provides low-level atomic memory operations that allow for safe and efficient concurrent access to shared variables in a Go program. How would you go about profiling and debugging a Go program? You can use Go's built-in profiling tools like GoTest, Bench, and GoToolProf to identify performance bottlenecks and optimize your code and use a debugger like Delve to step through your code and inspect variables and stack traces. Why is it worth subscribing to our YouTube channel? Subscribing to our YouTube channel will give you access to valuable content and updates on the latest interview tips and job search strategies. It's a great way to stay informed and improve your chances of landing your dream job.